Good afternoon. Welcome to my presentation on incorporating the ePortfolio High Impact Practice into an Honors Capstone course. Um, my name is Katie Englert, and I am very happy to be here with you today. As mentioned in my Teaching for Learning conference summary, the High Impact Practice ePortfolio allows students and faculty uh, to incorporate multiple facets and archives representatives of their creative, educational, and professional work into one digital space. Um, I'll be discussing why the ePortfolio could be a valuable tool for students and professionals, what I learned in creating my own ePortfolio, and then how to incorporate the ePortfolio into an honors capstone course, or any course really. Um, I'll be showing some student examples examples as, as well as my own example uh, before wrapping up with a brief discussion about future considerations. All right, so um, why the ePortfolio could be a valuable uh, tool for students and professionals. ePortfolios are potentially public and searchable digital spaces that may be viewed by numerous audiences. So a person can design their ePortfolio to fit their needs at any given time uh, to be able to showcase their work to specific, even multiple audiences. These audiences might be professors or peers. Uh, they might be future employers, uh, graduate schools, or even your own administrators at your institution. ePortfolios help people develop their digital composition skills in particular, research shows that the combination of thinking about design and textual content provides higher impact learning experiences than simply just putting words together on paper. E-portfolios have the ability to foster not just writing and subject-based expertise, but they can foster broader intellectual and cultural development, allowing students the ability to make connections between disciplines or various assignments they might complete during their education, Thus, ePortfolios can facilitate active learning that crosses the boundaries of individual courses, fields of study, or even the line between education and extracurricular development and commitments. Further, it allows the opportunity to showcase creative and scholarly work in, in one collective um, digital space. Um, so I figured if I was gonna try to implement ePortfolios into a class, I needed to know what I was doing. And um, so I took a lot of time to create my own. Um, I decided to design elements that showcase both my creative work uh, being photography, as well as my professional work concerning my faculty engagement and contribution plans and reports for promotion and tenure here at SUU. My disciplinary background is both in cultural anthropology and photojournalism, and my position at SUU as an, is as an honors lecturer. Um, after taking time to learn more about ePortfolio best practices, I decided to include both my FEC plans and reports uh, and my visual work that I do here at SUU um, for the APEX convocation series. And then I also include a section that illustrates uh, the highlights of my ongoing larger photography project uh, titled One Day at a Time. And I've been working on that project since 2010. So this is um, just a little bit of my homepage. Uh, I have a welcome page or about page, sorry. A little bit of information about me. Um, most ePortfolios, uh, you know, the criteria for a lot of them have an about page, uh, various uh, contact tact, um, like contact pages, and then uh, just other work that you want to include to, to basically showcase your skills and whatnot. And so here's my one day at a time project. Um, so you can, uh, the viewer can see the kind of ongoing work that I continue to do um, with, with my visual work, and that's um, up to 2020. And then um, my SUU APEX Convocation Series. So since 2017, I've been working with the APEX Series, um, and I, I photograph all of the different events going on on campus that's related to that. And then over here, I have um, my reports and my plans thus far. So I started my current position um, back in 2018, and you can kind of see my reports and, and plans, and you can also see the PDF versions. This is the area that needs the most work um, in terms of, of kind of improving how it looks and, and whatnot, but um, I, you know, ePortfolios are definitely a work in progress. Um, for me, my main audience for my ePortfolio, and this is something you always want to keep in mind, is 
your audience. Um, for me, it's going to be my mentor, um, my department chair, and maybe even other members of the faculty and engagement plan committee at SUU. Um, this could potentially be useful to faculty who have artistic components as part of their plans. Um, and the ePortfolio not only allows the visual artist like myself, the ability to showcase their work, but it allows for sound, video, multimedia components, um, as well as other capabilities. So certainly an area I'd like to explore in the upcoming months and, and semesters, um, especially those areas like the FEC plans where things are a little bit more wordy than I'd like. Um, but regardless, this is the example of mine um, so far. Um, and so I just wanted to show that so you all can see like where I'm coming from and then trying to implement it into the classroom uh, was kind of my next step. So the SU Honors Program is an interdisciplinary program uh, where to graduate with honors, among other criteria um, that students need to fulfill, they need to complete an honors capstone, which can be a disciplinary thesis, an experiential learning project, or an artistic type of project, or, or um, you know, any one of those kind of works, depending on, on what the student is majoring in and what they're interested in and doing ne next in their, um, in their careers. The ePortfolio tends to work best as a format for students uh, who may be doing more of an experiential learning or artistic type of project, uh, but it can also be useful and valuable to the students who are writing disciplinary theses and they want to incorporate other archives or elements into an, a digital uh, platform or space. So it allows, you know, again, it allows you to showcase work in a number of formats, uh, visuals, multimedia, PDF documents, architectural plans, teaching plans, for education majors and so on. So initially in the honors capstone course, I had made it a requirement for all, for all students to complete. And I had various results in that. Students had access to a number of ePortfolio resources. I had a lot of examples to show them what they could do. Um, I individually interacted with them about potential audiences that they might consider, uh, various documents throughout their education they could include. Um, and so on. So with the permission of, um, oh, sorry, uh, with, from a couple of students, um, I'll showcase some elements of, of um, both Kaylee and, and Allison. So Kaylee, um, this is hers, uh, the ability to share her honors uh, e-portfolio during her honors defense allowed her the opportunity to quickly adapt um, and, and apply some problem solving skills in a short amount of time. Uh, students who do not meet the required GPA to graduate with honors are able to defend their honors education by putting together an honors portfolio to illustrate their successes, their challenges, and their, and their academic work. So you can see these are various pictures that illustrate um, Kylie's uh, different roles, not only on campus, but um, you see her disseminating her work. She's out in the community. Um, she has an About Me page, which includes a resume cover letter. These are contracts that she completed for the honors program. And as you can see, she's able to implement the visual aspects of, of some of the contract work she did. And then she's an example of a student who did do a thesis for her disciplinary capstone and her honors capstone. And she's able to include all of that work here on her website or on her ePortfolio, as well as some other work and research that she has done um, and, and disseminated. So all of the different requirements from the honors program are included in that. And um, it's just packaged really nicely to showcase to um, you know, the, the audience. The other student, Allison Turner, um, she was able to incorporate needlepoint into her honors capstone work. So she's an English major. Um, with a, a literature emphasis and she's got some of her poetry work there, but then for her research and her capstone work, um, this is her literature review section. And she, she looked at several of Jane Austen's, Austen's um, texts and um, was really interested in, in the weather scenes that she came across in the, in the various novels and texts. And so she um, took her skills in needlepoint and created different weather scenes from different texts. And that was kind of a creative component to her capstone work. And then when she disseminated, she was able to include uh, visuals of this work that she had completed and then talk about um, the different weather scenes and whatnot. So a really great um, innovative way to incorporate her 
her uh, kind of artistic abilities with her research. Um, and then in one digital space, you can see her resume and, and other projects that she worked on and so on. Um, so those are uh, a couple of examples um, from former students. Um, and then I wanna kind of finish up by just considering um, some aspects of ePortfolios that would make, make it an ideal um, high impact practice. So um, moving forward when considering honors curriculum anyway, incorporating ePortfolio into the required courses prior to the end of the student's educational experience would be ideal. Um, so introducing at the beginning of a program could allow students to build their own ePortfolio over time rather than trying to find various documents and artistic work in their archives at the end. Um, so I would recommend if you're thinking about implementing ePortfolio as a practice into a degree program or an honors program or, or something similar like that, doing it much earlier. And I'd like to um, find ways to do that in, here at SCU. Also imperative to the individual success would likely be to have some kind of campus resource where students can get feedback um, on their creative works and on their e-portfolios. Uh, this currently isn't an option here at SUU, um, but it could be an opportunity in the future. Um, it really takes a lot of time, a lot of organization, a lot of planning, problem solving, thinking about what you wanna include, what you wanna take out, and then developing those skills uh, working uh, in an online format is also, um, you know, something that just doesn't happen overnight. So um, thinking about who your intended audience is, is always, you know, uh, a, a big piece of the puzzle as well. Um, an alternative to including it in an already robust curriculum like that at the SUU Honors Program could be to have ePortfolio workshops each semester for those students who could especially benefit from learning more about utilizing this practice into their educational pursuits. And that's something that I would like to kind of think about in the future, um, perhaps partnering with other groups or programs on campus where there is a student need to learn more about ePortfolios. That could be a great way to move forward uh, with this possibility, especially if you don't have um, a campus resource that could provide feedback to students. Um, so. In conclusion, I really have enjoyed working on my own ePortfolio and considering how to showcase my academic work and my scholarly and creative pursuits, while also considering how best to help support students who could also find this high impact practice useful in their education and then of course, uh, post-graduation. If any of you are interested in learning more or want a list of resources that I use to help students um, with their ePortfolios, I'd be happy to share um, there's a lot of great ePortfolios out there. Um, if you want to talk to me about ePortfolios in any way, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, there's my email address. And um, I just want to thank you very much for, um, for watching my video and have a great time at the Teaching for Learning uh, conference. Thank you very much.